Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to TD Fans Talk. It is your boy TD. I know it is late at night where I am. It's about 11, 15 p.m. That's East Coast Central Time. It's about 1030. West Coast, I believe y'all still 8 o'clock, so y'all live and prime. Man, it's your boy. It's almost bedtime. Just had to, you know, show y'all my new pillow the wife got me. My nice new pillow. It is so comfortable and fluffy. I just love it, man. It's bedtime with TD. It's time to dolphin y'all to sleep because I'm about to go to bed. But before I do, I wanted to do a daily recap because we didn't have football today, but we had an eventful day, especially with the headline of the day of the offense alignment coach um, basically getting canned, Flaherty. And I'm just excited about the guy that we brought in, Dave. So, um, Hopefully he works out and um yeah, I got the lights dimmed and everything because it's bedtime. I gotta set the aura right, you know, how to move right. No, and don't think crazy, all right. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, what an eventful day for our team. Shout out to everybody in the chat section. Vicky S, the first one, shout out to you. JC Force, the first mod to check in. What's up, man? Logan, you went first, Logan. Vicky was first. <laughs> Powerhouse underscore TJ. What's up with you, man? I'm good, Chris. I'm good. What's up, Finn Sanity in the house? What's up? All the way from Jersey. Oh, man. Powerhouse, you weren't the first one here, man. <laughs> What's up, Nico? Hey, Matt, I see you. Um, dolphins, y'all to sleep. Yes, man. We got a dolphin you to sleep tonight. This new pillow is like, now, now, let me be fair. My wife got this new pillow for me like uh, last week. But for some reason, she's been sleeping with it every night, and she's supposed to le supposedly the cowboy fan. And you know what? That reminds me. I gotta I gotta tell y'all what's up with my wife. Now y'all know we're gonna be traveling to Dallas on the road with the Dolphins to play against the Cowboys, and we're gonna be going to that game. It is a huge game. Let me tell you what my wife told me today, because her family's from Dallas. She basically said, "Don't tell I told y'all this, because she'll get mad at me." But she basically said, um. Man, babe, I'm starting to not want to go to the Dolphins Cowboy game, and maybe you should just go by yourself. I said, Why? We've been planning for this. I, I can't go without you. She said, Because I'm just not going to be right if we lose. I said, Oh, you're having doubts, huh? <laughs> she said, No, man, I don't think I'll be able to take it if y'all actually end up being good and y'all beat the Cowboys. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to take it. I, I don't even, I don't even want to go anymore because it's just, I'm scared of that. I said, no, you first of all, you're going to go. She said, well, it's my decision, and I'll tell you when we get closer to the time. I said, not if we buy those three, $400 a piece tickets. You better know <laughs> if y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, but no, nah, man, we're going to be on. Um, we're going to be in the house. We're going to be watching that game, and hopefully she don't chicken out and she actually goes. And, yeah, the biggest part about it is y'all see she getting nervous. She get nervous, man, because she knows. She hear this dolphin talk all day, so she get nervous about these amazing things we're doing. So she's scared, y'all. Y'all already know what time it is. Hopefully she don't hear me in there because she'll probably hop in the chat section from her phone if she can hear me. But anyway, let me keep it down. But, yeah, man, we got, man, we got everybody shook, man. Um, they don't want to get beat by the quote-unquote only three-win team. That's what they say. But they'll learn, man. They're going to have to learn the hard way. Um, I hope a lot of you all, though, on a side note, I hope y'all had a blessed day today. I hope um, y'all were able to find peace today. And for anybody who didn't find peace today and didn't have their greatest of days, just remember the biggest blessing is the fact that God is going to wake you up tomorrow and you're going to have a fresh start and you're going to have another day where you can just just be appreciative of life. You know, a lot of crazy things going on in this world right now. And the most important thing is for us to be appreciative of the, the one of the things that's not even discussed um, often enough, the most most precious thing you have every single day you wake up. Do y'all know what that is? That's just the ability to inhale and exhale. Be able to breathe. That means you're living. And that is a blessing. So for anybody who's having a rough time, not only at work, not only in life, marriage, children, whatever it may be. Just remember, life is the most important thing, and you have that. You have the number one, the biggest blessing that anyone can have, and that's life. So just keep your head up, stay positive, and remember, TD is always here, even if you need to talk to him, all right? Just letting you know that, all right? Now, um, outside of that, and that's y'all nightly prayer. How about that? Amen, powerhouse. Um, 
But yeah, but in other news, guys, we talked about a lot of things today. We talked about how I feel like the defensive tackle position is the um, strongest unit on our team and how the linebacker position is coming on very strong right now. And I'm actually impressed with that. And we already know what we have at the wide receiver position. One thing we didn't talk about enough today, which we're going to get into tomorrow, because hopefully if all goes well, you know, TD coming at y'all tomorrow the same way I came at y'all today. Nothing but straight, straight streams of fire, 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 just constantly bringing you content of what's going on so that you're informed about what's going on with our team. Um, if you haven't checked out those videos from earlier today, make sure you go check out every single one of them in your spare time. Have them playing. You know, just enjoy them. Um, just my thoughts on everything because I want everybody to keep up with the things I say and why I say it, okay? The most important thing, why I say it. So um, we made some great streams today, guys. We had a lot of fun, but the firing of Platt Flaherty was the biggest surprise today. It was actually just, it, man, it shook me, man, and it shook me in the best way possible. I just think we finally have the coach in the, in, that's in, that's in, unison with the front office and they're they're here to win man all this tanking and all that crap and all the evidence around you shows you that we're here to win we ain't, we don't have time for these games we're trying to win games y'all um we we ain't got time for the games but we're trying to win games and i love it man i think we're about to see some of our best football days ahead of us and you got to be excited being a miami dolphin fan because look at what we've been through over the last 20 years guys Look at what we've been through. You have to be excited. You have to be excited, man. No more of the crap. You're right, Adam. You no more of the crap. It's time for us to wake up, get energized about our team. And that's another thing. I was going to do a stream about our fan base, but I could just talk about it real quick now. I love how our fan base is, our, our fan base is showing up. We're at training camp practice deep. Filling the fill, those 2,000 spots that's available for people on a first come, first serve basis are filling up. The little stands they have at the training facility is filling up, man. TNT wall is undefeated. <laughs> I love that fake spike 94. I love it. I saw a post tonight that says Shaflores um, have to run to the TNT wall tomorrow since he hired Flaherty and now fired him. Um, since he's the one who hired him, and that was a mistake on his end. And I'm telling y'all, Flores ain't hired no Flaherty. He probably said, I guess, let's go with it. He didn't hire Flaherty. What happened was, like a like a few days after, um, like four days after um, Flores got the job, Flaherty was at it. Um, Flaherty was at it as the um, offensive line coach. And a few days after that, um, Dave came in. So I already knew, man, listen, th there are some things that you can read between the lines. If you just see all the stories, this was a setup from the beginning. Um, Flaherty was already on, a, um, on a short rope at the end of the day, they had Dave sitting there the whole time, just waiting on the offensive line to look bad. And as soon as it did, they were going to make that swap. That's just pretty evident. Why would, why would Dave leave the freaking Colts? He, why would he leave from being an offensive coordinator for the Colts, literally, and brought this team to the playoffs, had top 10 rank offense, top 10 rank passing game, and great protection for Andrew Luck last year. Why would he leave that as the offensive line coach to come to Miami just to be an analyst? Man, they already told him, come on to Miami. We got a role for you as an analyst. And when things go bad, we just going to plug you right into where you belong. He worked with O'Shea. He was under O'Shea when they were in New England together. This wasn't, people got to read between the lines. This was not a case of what people are making it seem like Flores made a bad decision in bringing him in. And now you want to fire him four days later. I don't think it's fair and this and that, that and this. Read right between the lines, ladies and gentlemen. The writing was on the wall, and the offensive line was not playing well in the first four days. But at the end of the day, I can care less. Even if the plot wasn't that thick, I can care less. You ain't performing. You don't belong here. Now every coach is going to be working extra hard. They're going to not take their job for granted, man. 
They're going to be out there really trying to develop these players, man. I love the message that was sent today. Everybody should be shook. The entire organization should be shook. The entire organization should be shook, man. And that's the way you want it. That brings a lot of humility in the building. I don't care how good you are, how much respect you had, whatever tenure you have. What happened today is going to scream. It's literally going to scream humility throughout the organization, no matter who you are. And, and it's a beautiful thing. I love it, man. Well, Pete up in here. Yeah, Pete, man. Listen, man, I want all singles, Pete. When you give me that 100, Pete, I want all singles, man. <laughs> and I ain't trying to take it to throw it to nobody, if you know what I mean. I just want singles, Pete. I want you to work whenever you handed me that cash. Talking about Rosen going to start the first game. Hey, he might. But I don't think so, Pete. Um, I'm with you, TD. This is for the best. Yes, it is, man. It really is. Uh, fins up. Ha, ha, ha. Don't laugh, Pete. These ain't jokes. <laughs> These ain't jokes. It's serious. Pete, Pete go uh, open his mouth and say he's going to donate $100 to the channel um, if Rosen don't start game one. I don't know what convinced this man to even make that type of uh, one-sided wager, might I add. <laughs> one-sided wager. TD trying to go to the strip club. <laughs> no, man. No, not me, man. It's been a long time since I enjoyed those type of festivities. Uh, TD going to make it rain on the live stream. Hey, listen, man, I got a jar of pennies in the closet. I can make it rain, y'all. Oh, man, let's get it. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. You better know it, man. You better know it. Sometimes your biggest trials are our tests for you, man. TNT wall ain't the only thing that is going to be undefeated this season because this team going to be undefeated, baby. He got fired from um, the Colts. Hey, I didn't know that, but that would be shocking to know that he got fired from the Colts. After what they did, that would be weird. Unless they, it was probably, it might even been like a little power struggle. I'll be it'll be interesting to know why they fired him. I mean, it's hard to believe it would be due to the performance. Look at what they were able to accomplish. Real hard to believe that. I mean, they had a rookie offensive lineman that he turned into an all pro and a pro bowler. It'll be really hard to think that it might have been one of those things where he thought his experience and everything. He starts speaking up a little more on what should happen and maybe things didn't go well. So they just decided to part ways. Stuff like that happens too. But if that's true, I'll look into him when I do my research because I'm going to make a video on Dave. He deserves his own respect at this moment and he got to be introduced. So maybe tomorrow or the next day or next week, depending on, you know, we might want to see how he does first. Um, I'll be doing a video about him. Definitely will, man. Um, the Dolphins need to develop a better line before starting Rosen. I mean, people can argue that, too. I mean, you don't want to have the Tannehill situation all over again. You definitely don't want that. So I get that logic. You know, make sure your line is straight before you bring in who you feel is the future. Super Bowl champions, Miami Dolphins. Let's go. Fins up, Wellington um, Tejada. Shout out to you, man. Name the best player at every position for the Dolphins. Let's go, Marco. I'm here for you tonight. Let's see. Offensive line, Laramie Tunsil. Running back, Kalen Bellage. Don't beat me up. Um, fullback, um, Chandler Cox. Tight end, Nick O'Leary right now. I'm talking about all your front runners, okay? Um, wide receiver, Kenny Steele. Some of y'all say Albert Wilson. Hey, he coming off an injury. I don't even know who he is right now. Um... Did I miss any position on the offense? Quarterback. Ooh. Jake Rudick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. I would have had Pete fuming. Pete would have been calling in right now. Jake Rudick. <laughs> oh, man. Best quarterback right now is Ryan Fitzpatrick, but that can change real, really, really, really fast all right um on the defensive side of the ball best defensive um lineman um i don't care what you say christian wilkins man this kid has been balling he's been he's been playing better than anybody on the line him and vincent taylor but i'm just saying i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it to the kid playing that well 
Vincent Taylor. I mean, Christian Wilkins. I, I, hey, it is what it is. Nickel, obviously, Minka Fitzpatrick. Linebacker, right now? Uh, <laughs> I don't even want to answer that. Y'all really going to be mad at me if I say some new guy that y'all never heard of. Uh, but, hey, I don't know, man. Linebacker is too early to even say who the best one. It's real hard. I mean, default and make you want to just say Kiko just to say it. Then you want to be like maybe uh, Jerome. Or then you're like, man, this Sam guy has been balling, man. Uh, this Sa Sam E, he's been balling at the linebacker position. I mean, he ain't the best player yet because I need to see longevity of it, but he's playing the best in camp. But let me move on. Um, cornerback, Eric Rowe. Nah, let me stop. It's Xavier Howard. I know some of y'all will be like, see, I knew he hated Xavier Howard. He don't like him. Xavier Howard, hands down, not even close. Safety, Rashad Jones. But, hey, Bobby been balling at the safety position, guys. Bobby McCain has been balling at the safety position, man. He has been balling. He really has. Um, Kiko, Kiko, Kiko. <laughs> CD, you played football in high school. Yes, I did. I got a funny football story in high school. So I played football, right? Um, I, I tried out late, actually, but I still came out, and I played two positions. I played um, safety, and I played the punter. So let me explain. See, so remember, I was always the backup to um, somebody named – his name was KP. And I was always his backup, but I remember he um, he would he wouldn't come to practice all the time. So I never forget, man. I was out there actually laying that hat, man. I would always running backs used to get low. I used to get lower, but boy, the lower you get, the more pain they could put on you. But you're still stopping the play. Um, so I did well at safety. Um, wasn't no all all American nothing like that. I just played. It wasn't no accolades. I wasn't looked at as oh, TD could be balling. I was just playing. I played football, you know. I never had a case where, hey, I was good at it. I mean, I'm not saying I was bad. I was good at it, but y'all get my point. It ain't like I was looking to make it some long-term thing. I was playing because I just wanted to play. But then I was also the punter because they were like, man, we need a punter. I was like, I'll punt because I always kick balls. You know, you're in the street on the hood. You know, you just be kicking them, booting them. Who can kick it the farthest? So, but when I still, when I play, see, when you're on the street, you booting it and you kicking far. But when I put them pads on every game, y'all, this is the funny thing. Don't get me wrong. I got some good kicks. But every game, here's the real funny thing. I would kick the ball in a lot of times for some strange reason. And the coach never stopped me from being a kicker, even though this was boneheaded. But it always worked. And I didn't mean to. I would be wanting to kick it so hard, I would boom. But it would go straight up in the air. <laughs> And I'd be like, oh, another one. But it would come down, hit the defender, and we get on top of it, and we get it, and it'll always happen. Like I would try to kick it so far down the field that just that missed time, it caused it to go straight up, come down, hit the ground, hit the defender, and we dive on it. Oh, we got the ball back. Yeah, that's what I do, baby. <laughs> Y'all know. I, mean, I make the most of it, man. But I did that a few times, and it was just funny. But I had fun doing that too, man. Played basketball too. I was really good at basketball. I think I could actually have been something um, in basketball. The problem is one day um, in PE in eleventh grade, no, the tenth grade, if I'm not mistaken. I, I was playing, ba I was playing basketball, and they threw me an alley, and I went up, but the alley was thrown low, so I caught it, and but I still wanted to dunk it, even though I should have just laid it in. I still wanted to dunk it so it, 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 the natural reaction for it being low caused the natural win, natural windmill. So I tried windmilling, and the rim is right here, and I got stuck. And my whole body came down, and I stopped my body with my hands. And I got up, and I ran down and played defense, and I ran down and played offense. And on my way back down playing defense, I just hit the ground, and scoot it to the wall because I felt the pain like I've never felt in my life in my wrist. Coming down, stopping my body weight with my wrist, fractured my wrist. And, I, and the adrenaline from it made me not feel pain on defense, offense, and finally felt it on defense. Man, my wrist was so bad. I remember going to the hospital 
and they put the half cast on it where they say like eight weeks don't move it. After that, we'll remove it. Then you do a little bit of rehab. But I remember my wrist was healed in 10 days. My wrist was healed in 10 days. How? I never forget. The day I got home with that soft cast, I cut it off the same day. And I had my hand like this. I never wanted to move it. It was in pain. Just that slight movement like this. The slight movement like this had me crying in tears. It hurt so bad. But for some reason, I don't know, I was just wild and a crazy kid. But I was putting myself through pain, rehabbing myself for 10 days and just crying every movement. But it got better and it got better and stronger. Next thing you know, 10 days later, I'm moving my wrist. Never went to the doctor to get it checked out or anything. And today I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. But I don't know why I did that. I just it took me 10 days on a fractured wrist and it was healed. I literally was fighting through the pain and moving it while it was fractured. I know it sounds weird. Why would you do that? But I was doing it. Um. But from there, I um, joined the marching band in the drum line. And it's funny because in high school, we used to pick on the drum line kids. Like the guys who were um, hung out with me, we would get banned in the last period just because the real band all had to sign up for fourth period, the last class of the day. And they actually practiced during fourth period. But we would get the class so we can get an easy A. Um, because we weren't in a band, but we the band director didn't want to deal with us. So he let us sit in the corner and we just got our A's. We just got our A's every time. And um, we used to laugh at them and mess with them. And all of us end up joining the band. And that got me a scholarship to college, So, which is crazy. So that was a um, huge win. So that was my high school sports story in my past. So I was actually in a marching band um, in college, too. Uh, TV, oh, well, thank you, um, Flex Rosen, for the donation. Uh-oh, any relation to Josh Rosen? What you think of Hearn's joint? think of Hearns join Miami. I think it's a beautiful thing, but it makes the wide receiver position a tough one now. I mean, who's going to be left out, Flex? That's that's the question. Flex Rosen in the chat with the donation. I appreciate it. And do you think that Rosen will take the job and finally shut up everyone, shut up everyone up? Finn's football is back. Yes, sir. And your name is Flex Rosen. I don't know what I should say here because you might be related to Rosen. But no, nah, anyway, um, I think Rosen can take the starting position, but my whole point is I don't want him to take it soon. I don't want him to be rushed into the situation or thrust right into it. I want him to understand that he has three years, two million per. This team doesn't mind being patient with him. He needs to take all the pressure off of him to try to prove everybody wrong right now. It's good to have that intensity and go out there and try to give your all and give your best, but it's unnecessary. Keep learning. Keep you put it like this. Honestly, he's been given a blessing. He's been given the opportunity to sit back and take his time to develop and learn. When there's so many quarterbacks that's thrown in the fire and three years later, they ain't even in the league because. They went to terrible situations and it made them look bad and they could have been so much better. That's just my thought. He has he, this is a blessing that he needs to recognize that and be happy with them giving the opportunity to develop and take his time. So that's my thought on it. But I but if he earns it and he comes out and he ends up being the starter, that makes me feel great because the only way that's going to happen is if the coaches feel like he is the future and that's going to be beyond revelation. So that's my I appreciate it with your um donation to the channel. Um, because that's what it's about. First of all, you're supporting this channel, and I love you for that, helping me make this channel bigger and better. And not only that, um, you put a question behind it, and I'm happy that I can answer it for you, especially somebody who's looking out for the channel like that. Please hit that like button, guys. We got 46 in the room and only 30 likes. I know we can get it up. Um, kickballs. <laughs> TD, maybe the new coach they hired saw something the old one didn't, like adding MD to the old line. And um, R.E., who is R.E.? I know M.D. is Michael Dieter. And maybe R.E., maybe I'm just drawing a blank. Um, maybe. I was actually going to go live earlier today to talk about the Michael Dieter talk. Let me also tell you another theory of what might have also gotten um, Flaherty fired. A part of me also felt when I read an article earlier, a part of me felt like 
he wasn't exuding the behaviors of what this front office is trying to get across, and especially with the information they're trying to release. I've been searching high and low for a coach to tell me what they really think about Rosen and Fitzpatrick, and nobody can sit here and tell me they've gotten anything other than, you know, they're developing, you know, it's things to work on X, Y, and Z for both quarterbacks. They've been so neutral about every position. You ask about the quarterback, they say they both do things well and they both can improve. You see how they don't play sides or give any advantage. They say the same thing with running backs. They say the same thing with, with everybody. And the first time today, I finally read an article where I caught a coach talking about specifics about a player. And it was Flaherty talking about theater. And I read the article with the quotes of what he was saying. Well, this kid, he still got a long way to go. He needs to learn how to do this better. It's basically he's giving away prized information that these coaches, I mean, they're not giving away. It's almost like they're trained not to give it away, but he was giving it away. And I'm like, I don't think Flores and Greer is going to like that. Because what you're doing is automatically basically telling the rest of the O-line, even though you're backing it up with there's no guaranteed starter, but you're kind of saying Dieter has a long way to go. He's definitely not there yet and not ready, but he's going to be a great player in this league. That's giving away too much of the farm. That ain't what Flores and them have been talking about lately. That's not what O'Shea and everybody has been telling the media. And it, it don't matter what player you talk you talk about, they always keep it neutral in press conferences. They never talk about specific, specific strengths and weaknesses. They say, yeah, I mean, things to um, improve, things they can do well. But for the first time, Flaherty was the first coach that when I read that article, I was shocked. Man, he's giving away actually detailed information. I thought about that. I said, this is not in line with what every single other coach has been doing. I don't care who it is, the defensive coordinator, the DBs, um, the, or the tight end coach, all of them. All of them have been in unison with we are not going to give you all any specific information. We are only going to give you generals and make sure that we find the positive out of your question and give you that. And Flaherty went left of that when I read that article. I was actually shocked. I was going to do a video about it, and 30 minutes later, I'm on a live stream, and, oh, they just fired the O-line coach. What? That's what happened. So I know some people may be like, yeah, I mean, it maybe that was so, it may have had something to do with it, but not likely. But believe it or not, things like that make a huge difference. That is That does not show he is 100% in line with the other coaches. Trust me, man. I've been looking for it, searching high and low. I read almost every article I see about the Miami Dolphins. Looking for new information. Stuff to puzzle quotes and things that they say because I read their words. It give you a lot of information if you study these coaches' words and how they say it. And that caught my eye. It caught my attention. It really did. I was actually shy. I mean, in the way he was saying it, I was like, and why would you even say that anyway, even if it's true? You don't say that about a player that you're trying to develop. Oh, he's a far, he got a lot to work on. He needs to be a better guy of engaging the this and that. Yeah, like he was being specific. And it shocked the hell out of me. And I was like, man. So it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Um who, in your expert opinion, will win the quarterback battle? Fitz, <laughs> why did you even put Ruddick in there? I think Fitzpatrick is going to win it. Um, no, not a Dolphin question. Should Cowboys break the bank to pay Zeke? No, Cowboys should trade Zeke while they can instead of letting them go in free agency after another year. They should trade Ezekiel Elliott. Jerry Jones already proved it in the past. A Mack truck can run between that line. They should trade him, man. Um, what's good, homie? I'm great, Mike. Hey, TD, what's up? I'm good. Um, only gamer, 2367. I'm in the building. Good observation, TD. I guess it's a good observation. I mean, I'm not saying that's what happened, but I noticed that, and that just didn't sit well with me, what Flaherty was doing in that um and giving quotes and information about what's going on with a specific player. It's not in line with what the team has been doing. One view, one plan, one vision. 
Bill B doesn't say crap. Nada. Exactly. TD, who's going to be the new O-line coach? Dave, whatever his last name is. It's long, but he has the experience and success. So I hope hope that translates into what we, he brings to the Dolphins. Um, we facing the Cowboys this season. Can the Dallas Cowboys function without Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott? Yeah, if they replace them with quality players, anybody can be replaced in this league. That's like saying if the Chiefs didn't have Mahomes, can they function with Brady? Yeah. You know, so, yeah, they can function without him. It's just a simple fact of will they? Will they bring in someone as good or they can do the same thing? I think um, they're going to try to keep Prescott and get rid of Zeke. See, Cowboys in a tough situation. Ezekiel Elliott, the better player than Dak Prescott, but Dak Prescott is the quarterback. But the quarterback ain't as good without his O line and his run game with for their situation. Dak Prescott ain't that good without the good run game in the O line. So, oh y'all hear my wife talking about dude? Is this Cowboy talker, Dolphin talk? Yeah, you're right. Let me get off of them bums. Let me stop talking about those bums. <laughs> Uh, you ain't shutting the stream down. Anyway, leave us alone. It's Dolphin time. Love you, baby. He's their guy. It's plain and simple. So they got rid of um, Flat. It's true. I mean, that's just coming. That's that's true. That's just the basic um, principle of it all. Um, Dave is their guy. And Flaherty, all they needed was an excuse. And the first four days for the whole line was all they needed. Perfect situation for them. Um, next price practice, we might shuffle on the old line, whatever Dave does and Dave, I trust that's good insight out of the box thinking I try Chris. Um, and really it ain't out of the box for me. It's just my logic, what it puts together. When you study so much information about a subject, you start to put things together and you might have an eye to see things that others don't because you put the time in for research. That's why I love that y'all subscribe to this channel. Y'all ain't got to do the research. I'm bringing it to you. I'm bringing the research to you. Um, let's see. Um, yo, TD, who's your favorite Dolphin player? Minka Fitzpatrick. Right now he is. That's my boy. I wore my Minka shirt today um, all day, man. Uh, good point. Um, late night with TD. I like it. I'm trying, man. I had to show you I'm a new pillow to wipe guy, even though she claimed to be a Cowboy fan, but she ain't even let me sleep with it. She's been sleeping with it all. It's like one of those long ones, too. She was sleeping with it every night. So, yeah, I might have to take it tonight, but she's going to fight me about it. She's going to fight me about it. Um, let's see. Um, uh, keep it in-house. Landry should have did that with him. Uh, I'm not sure what y'all talking about. Um, let him play final year was a mistake. All uh, right. Uh, hi, Hillary. She, oh, she, she gone. She went out there in the living room with the babies. Um, and I don't know why she got them all up. Um, let me get off them, um, bums. Yes, let's do that, please. TD, is it bad that I still wear my Landry jersey? Guilty pleasure. J Rose, the general me will always say, you do what you do, whatever make you happy. You know, it ain't none of it ain't none of your business what anybody else think about you. But my professional experience, get rid of that jersey. Get rid of Landry. He ain't a dolphin great. <laughs> you know, he did great things when he was with the dolphins, but he ain't a dolphin great. So don't be all attached to it, you know. Don't worry, all you gotta do is bet Pete. Um, that Rosen ain't going to start the first week of the game and you can, you know, get a new jersey. That's all you got to do. <laughs> um, TD, my gut feeling. Um, shout out, Andrew, by the way. Fins up, baby. TD, my gut feeling Josh Rosen will be the start of this season. And our quarterback, um, oh, man, y'all moving so fast. I'm getting behind. You know, disappeared on me. And our quarterback of the future. Hey, Anthony, you might have to use the restroom. You say that's your gut feeling, and you need to go get them things out your gut because Fitzpatrick started, man. <laughs> uh, uh, we have to do a game-by-game -game record prediction video, TD. I've done one, but maybe we could do one together, and we can um, do a live stream, collab on it for insanity, and talk about why we think what we think, man. 
seven thousand subs by game one. Ooh, Adam thinking big. Do y'all know that we're only like um eighty subscribers, eighty five subscribers away from five thousand? We're almost there. We're eighty five subscribers away from five thousand. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and help us reach our goal of five thousand before we go for six thousand, baby. Before we go for six thousand. Hmm. Shout out to all everyone who subscribed to the channel. Thanks for your love and support. We're doing big things over here at TD Fans Talk, man, and I'm loving it. And shout out to DolphinsTalk.com. We've collabed together. We um, have a partnership. All, a lot of my videos are posted on their website now. It's an amazing website where you can get a lot of information about the Miami Dolphins, different people who do what I do, different writers for articles, everything. So go check them out, guys. Um, 38 days until the opening day. Don't worry, baby. The opening date is Thursday for me. So hopefully y'all join me just like this right here. Thursday night, we're going to be live streaming the game, the Hall of Fame game. We are live opening the season on TD Fans Talk. It's going to be me getting my practice in, calling games, um, trying to do my best because I don't know their players very well, but y'all know how I do. You know, um, whoever playing, you know, uh, Fitzpatrick back to pass. He has time in the pocket. You know, I got to get my stuff sharp, you know, get ready for this season, guys. Um, very cool pillow, pillow. If I can enjoy it, this is like the first time I get to enjoy the pillow. The very first time I get to enjoy it, cause my wife want to sleep with it every night. It is soft though. Oh my gosh, it is soft. I can I gotta admit, it's very soft, very soft. Check it out. 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 All right. But anyway, um, our O line is worrisome. Yes, they are. The whole right side. <laughs> It'll um be our Achilles heel, I think. I don't know, Chris. It's still early. Like everybody want to say about everything else, it's still early. Let's see what Dave can do. They fired the man and say he was having problems implementing the new system. And they believe the new system is everything. You know, the Patriots don't have, you know, all pro offense alignment every year filling the roster, but they get the job done. So we'll see. All right. Good night, fat boy swag. Um, you have to get off. Um, Good night. <laughs> hey, I ain't going to be too much longer, though, because I probably keep in the house up right now. Um, who are we going to start at our receiver position? Parker Stills, Wilson, Horn, Hearns, Horn, um, Butler all have a shot. Starters, Kenny Stills, Devontae Parker. Mm. If Albert Wilson is the same Albert Wilson that left us, He'll be starting. Um, those are the three, um, but it's hard to say. I mean, it depends on the game. It depends on the package. I don't know why I'm getting out of what I usually – out of the box or what I know. It's going to be situational. We're playing this team this week. You guys and your – I mean, we might be playing a team that has small small cornerbacks this week. All right, Devontae Parker, Bryce Butler, y'all. it's time for y'all to put that work in. We might play bigger receivers and we want to kill them with speed. Jakeem Grant, Albert Wilson, Kenny Stills, y'all guys, y'all ready? I mean, it just depends on the week. I mean, all of them going to play regardless, but as far as primary um, who's going to be carrying the load is going to be schematic. Um, Zeke. Um, trading him before his contract ran out. Landry ordeal should have been handled um, like that. Yeah, that's that's true. My favorite Miami Dolphin player is Dan Marino. His 1984 NFL set the tempo. Um, yes, um, tempo for the modern quarterback for guys like Brady, Rogers, Mahomes, and Breeze. I agree with you with every single one of them except Mahomes. Can we wait to see this kid off his rookie contract to say if he set the um, table for them? Because you would have probably said the same thing about Cam Newton when he was on his rookie deal. You would have probably said the same thing about uh, Russell Wilson on his rookie deal. You would have said the same thing about Kaepernick, um, RG3, all of them when they were on their rookie deal and they were balling out, slinging the ball like Dan Marino. Then they got paid and it wasn't the same. And Dan Marino did it without the best, uh, you know, the best, always having the best around him. You know, he had good teams, but not always the best around him. So. We'll see. Um, um, right. You can still rock your Tannehill jersey, though. I don't rock my Tannehill jersey. But I tell you what, Tannehill end up in the playoffs and we don't. I'm going to be spiteful and be on live streams 
calling the game with the jersey on. The teal, teal, white, and orange Tannehill jersey. Talking about, I told y'all. Nah, I just mess with y'all. <laughs> um, TD, have you um, seen the Omar guy on Twitter? That guy is crazy. He don't know what he's talking about. I know who Omar is. I, I watch his tweets and get updates on those because those would be pretty spot on as far as the play-by-play -play action. But I don't know what you mean when you say he don't know what he's talking about. I mean, I've heard things of him in the past that I disagree with. But if you talk about a specific subject and tell me what he says, then I'll tell you if I agree or not, and I'll give you my take on if he, if in my opinion, if he's right or wrong and why he's right or wrong. So outside of that, you got to give me details for me to actually comment and elaborate on it because I don't follow guys like that enough to care about their opinion to that extent. All it takes is about two or three boneheaded things for people to say, and I don't follow you really. I mean, I still mess with you. We cool, but I don't let that negative stuff feed my mind because a lot of them will tell y'all, TD just positive about everything. He delusional. He don't know what he's talking about. Okay. You know, I just leave it at that. Um, what up, DB2K? I see you. Yes, um, you can, Vicky. What is Vicky asking? You can still rock. Oh, yeah. Um, TD, I just want to succeed. Succeeded. I just want to succeed it. I just want to succeed, I guess. So, yes, we all do. Vicky S with the donation. What up, Vicky? I see you. And Vicky been here every day, man. Shout out to Vicky, man. Showing the love and support. I appreciate your love. Thank you, thank you, thank you for always showing your love, man. Um, and hit me up an email, Vicky. Um, Ron, hello. What's up? What's up, Ron? As always, Finn Sanity at Vicky laughing. Um, succeed. I know. Um, TD, do we a Zake type running back on roster? Do we have, I don't know, do we Zake type running back? I don't know what that is. Help me out, Anthony. Re rephrase. Oh, well, um, where's my fluffy pillow? The one you talking about, Adam, it's in the living room, man. <laughs> in the fluffy pillow. Fins Nation, I'm back. Pete, you missed it, man. You missed it. They just cut Rosen and they bring Tannehill back. <laughs> oh man, welcome back, Pete. Uh, what happened to the live talk? I'm live right now. Offensive lines or hard to predict. Um, example: the Colts, one of the worst lines for years and years and years. Last year, young players, one of best. Uh, yeah, they're hard to predict. Um, but you just want a unit playing cohesively together. You know, um, you spot on, though. Interesting fact about um, D.D. I don't know who D.D. is. When he was here in 2017, um, he was the one who moved Jesse Davis from guard to right tackle. D.D. Is that you talking about the new old line coach or something? I mean, who is D.D.? I may be tripping. Um, T, uh, T D, do you think that Brian Flores is? And that's it. And y'all killing me with these chats, to <laughs> Preston Williams. Um, I mean, can be a successful head coach. Um, coach. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to be. He's going to be the coach of the year. One of these years coming up soon, he'll be coach of the year. You'll see. How are we going to use um Jakeem Grant? Uh, how are we going to use your king grant? That's a good question. Um, and I'm trying to evaluate this given the coaches that we have. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Um, do y'all think Jakeem Grant has that Edelman type style ability? See, the thing is, Jakeem Grant can be a more versatile Edelman. The problem is Edelman also uses his strength and will to get things done. Edelman takes a lot of pain. He fights for everything. He's getting contact and still making the moves. That's the only thing I don't see Jakeem has in his great, um, game. To do what he does while making contact. So... I'm going to be honest with y'all. I just don't even know how much the coaches view Jakeem Grant as a 
reliable threat. That may sound crazy to some of y'all, but think about what I'm saying here. First of all, I don't think we've even heard this man's name one time in camp. Has he just been chilling or something? I mean, he's been full, running and everything. I mean, have we heard anything about Jakeem Grant out of camp? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Edelman garbage. Bobby McCain shut him down. Edelman a product of Gronk and Brady. You say what you want. But watch the watch them watch the Super Bowl, Pete. You can really say that, Pete, after watching the Super Bowl. All right, man. I don't know, but jet sweeps, open field situations, um, five wide receivers where he can one on one and beat his guy across the middle or something. I mean, come on, y'all. Let's just keep it real. Outside of that, what do we revere Jakeem Grant as? I just love his speed and his shiftiness and how, you know, he has explosiveness. But y'all tell me on the field, what are his strengths in what situations? If you really think about it, it will make you think. And that's not really a great look. We just always know he's been a weapon of ours and he's been good and we like him. We really like him. We like him. Y'all know what I mean here? Let me move this pillow. We like him. I like him too. TD, can you please read my comment from before? I hope it's not far away. Uh, TD, do we have an Ezekiel Elliott type running back on the roster? I don't know because I don't know what type of runner Ezekiel Elliott is. Y'all think I just be picking on the quarterbacks when I say put them in a tough situation to see how they perform? Put Ezekiel Elliott with this offensive line. Is he going to be the Cowboys Ezekiel Elliott? You see what I mean? It's easy for us to say a player's good when they're in a great situation. Got one of the best offensive lines in the league and has had that same line since he was a rookie a few years ago. I'm not just about to saying that about quarterbacks. That goes for everybody on the team. A tight end may not look great when they got a trash quarterback. You know what I mean? Think about how would a tight end look with Brady versus having Sam Darnold. You see what I mean? But we'll rank and, 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 and evaluate the tight end and automatically say, oh, they ain't even close to being as good as the Brady's tight end. Well, maybe Brady is helping the tight end look like that. And Ezekiel Elliott putting up these awesome numbers is also a product of the O-line. But we always just want to say, Ezekiel Elliott. I'm not biased. I'm not just using that example for the quarterbacks. That's why I say Kenny Stills might even have a, even more of an upside. He's already legit, and he might still have. We still might have not seen his best season. Can we give him a line that's going to give the routes time to develop and a great quarterback to, behind it and see what Kenny Stills does then? When has he ever had it other than his young career with Breeze? Young career when he was young. Now he's more polished. You know what I mean? So, no, man. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm, I'm getting rid of him. He blocked off of this channel. All that hateful stuff, that crazy stuff. Just some people, their mama ain't raise them right. But anyway, um, that's just my thoughts, man. I can't compare people like that. That's why Saquon Barkley is better than Ezekiel Elliott and potentially best running back in the league. Some could argue he ain't got the same old line and he's successful. So, But I also the type of person I still don't get impressed off of one, two, three season guys. A minimum, you got to do what you've been doing and get off your rookie contract and still do it for a little, and then I respect you. That's just me. That's how TD roll. I don't care nothing about a Patrick Mahomes, 5,000 yards, 50 touchdowns. Two years from now, he might be making $40 million, putting up 3,500 yards and 28 touchdowns. So much back closer to normal when the rest of that team start looking normal. I'm just saying. 
It's just the reality. People ignore stuff like that. What did I miss so far? Just coming in, man. DY2, you missed it, man. They're getting rid of Rosen and trying to bring Tannehill back. I'm sorry, man. I'm just playing. I know I keep saying that to some of y'all. It'd just be funny to me because some of y'all probably be like, what? <laughs> um, if Duper was great, he'd already be in the Hall of Fame. To my knowledge, he's never even been nominated. <sighs> it's crazy, man. My home's over Rosen. <laughs> Dang, I went to get an ice cream sandwich and missed the troll. Oh, yeah. Um, but, guys, man, it's getting late. It's midnight, guys. I just wanted to hang out with y'all for a little. I am getting tired. Y'all know I put that work in today. This is like the sixth video of the day. I was going to go live talking about Michael Deere earlier, but just start spending some time with the family, man. But I thank all y'all for tuning in to TD Fans Talk. Again, make sure y'all check out DolphinsTalk.com. We partner together. Um, outside of that, we got more camp tomorrow, guys. And I can't wait to get the live tweets because you know your boy going to be live bringing them to you. Plus a few more stories. Um, I don't know where my paper went with the other um, topics that I'll be discussing tomorrow as well. Um, one of them is the state of the defense. I really want to talk about that because I'm just – I'm just I'm actually more happy than I expected to be with the defense right now. We're going to be talking about that on the live stream tomorrow, plus a lot of the things that's been happening in and out of camp. And maybe tomorrow or Wednesday, I'll be giving you the um, video on our new offensive line coach, giving you the breakdown of what we have and his history, because he actually has an experienced history. He's done a lot of things. All right. So we want to make sure we know the type of guy that we're getting so we can appreciate him. If we start to see the line improve, we know why. You know, we know why. Um, so that's a big up to him. Um, but again, I thank everybody for tuning in and um, supporting this channel. A matter of fact, before I go, I'm going to give y'all one more piece of love. One second. I'm going to give y'all one more piece of love before I go. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take one call. And hopefully, and you know what, this is the one time, if it's a new caller, that'll be great because I want to hear from somebody who may even be newer to the channel within the last, you know, three months. Um, go ahead and call in and tell me what you think about the channel and what you think about the team before we get out of here and go to bed. The number is in the comment section below. Again, um, give me a call real quick and let's let everybody hear what you got to say about the Miami Dolphins and this channel. All right, here we go. Thank you for calling TD Fans Talk, home of the real Miami Dolphin fans. Um, who do we have on the line? What's up, TD? Who is this? Hello? Can you hear me, TD? No, uh, yeah, who is this? This is Brent. Who? Brent. I can, I can barely hear you. Yeah, a little bit. Who is this? This is Brandon. What's up, Brandon? How you doing, man? I'm doing very good. Awesome, man. Awesome, man. I'm glad to see you called in. So tell us what you think about what's been going on with the team lately. This team, I think, what defense we going to do something special this year? That's what I keep trying to tell people. But why do you think that we're going to do something special? Beat by to cause them to um get um get kicked out of the playoffs. They lost by the Patriots. I hate the Patriots, TD. You know, you know we hate them Patriots. Yeah, but I asked that for a reason. They lost by the Patriots. Um, was their offense um as successful against the Patriots? Because they've been playing great offense all season, and the Patriots kind of shut them down. Oh man, he hung up. I don't know what happened, guys. If we got oh no. Oh, that's why my phone actually died and I don't even know what my phone died. I feel bad now. Gosh, this happened to me um yesterday. It's late, y'all. It's been a battery from all day. 
Please forgive me, Brandon. My phone just died on you, man. It's booting back up now, man. It's booting back up now. You got to forgive me, man. But he was talking about um, worried about the Chargers who actually lost in the um, divisional round of the playoffs to the um, New England Patriots. And how did they lose? Because the Patriots slowed them down. Their defense actually um, affected um, the Chargers' offense. And who was responsible for that defensive performance? Brian Flores. I'm not worried about the Chiefs. I'm not worried about – not the Chiefs. I'm not worried about the Chargers. I'm not worried about them at all, man. TD said it, man. We're going to start 3-1, and one, but I don't think it's going to be the Chargers. And God knows it better not be the Cowboys. But then it better not be the Patriots. It's just a lot going on right now, man. Wait, hold on. Is the Cowboys in the first four games? I believe so, like the third one or something. And then in, in the Ravens. Those are the first four games. Um, you have a call. Oh, man, somebody just hung, called and hung up. Um, that's lighting. That lighting is legit um, fireworks tonight. Lighting is light fireworks tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. Let me change the tune. Oh, I'm about to knock it down. Yeah, that's my little sign, man. I like that. Um, um, raining right now. The lightning is life. Oh, just go 16 and 0 and forget about all the tension. Hey, that would be beautiful, man. But I'm out of here, y'all, man. I'm going to go to sleep tonight. Um, I love y'all, man. Thank y'all for tuning in to TD Fans Talk. If you haven't checked out the other videos on my channel, make sure you check them out. Do me a favor. Go leave a comment about what you think about the video. Matter of fact, if you don't want to read a comment, how about read some of the other comments and comment on what some of the other people have to say. Find the haters in the chat section and tell them why they wrong. Sometimes I love when I go in the comment section. And somebody trying to tell me why I'm wrong, and one of y'all tell them why they're wrong. And I just love that. It shows so much interaction in the chat section. So if you want to contribute to the channel, you can do that as well. Because I'm going to be honest, these days I've been doing so many videos. And like today, I did five videos. And if you add them all up, it's probably 300 comments now. And I read them all. Trust me, I actually read them all. And but it's it's getting hard to respond to them all. So especially if you're a mod, help me out and everybody else. Go to the comment sections, read what other people saying about um, some of the things I'm saying, whether they agree or disagree. Go hit a like if you agree with their comment. Comment if you disagree. Tell them why and get the comment section popping. That's another way that we can bring more people to the channel, to more interaction because people feel more bonded to the channel by. But I'm going to always still go through and comment on certain people and try my best to hit your um, message up. But, again, it's TD Fans Talk. Love y'all. It's been a great day. I got to get my rest because I'm ready for tomorrow. They got a day of rest. Rest those muscles up. And we back to the action, baby. This TD Fans Talk, home of the real. Let me repeat. Home of the real. The real Miami Dolphin fans, baby. You better know it. Home of the real Miami Dolphins fans. Love y'all. Appreciate your support, man. Do you like video games? You don't want me in Madden. I'll see y'all later. Y'all ain't ready for that. All right, y'all. I'm out. Peace.